about 4,000 years ago, Allah ordered Prophet Abraham to leave his homeland in Palestine and move south to a place where he would begin a new life. Along with his wife, Siti Hajar, and their son, Ismail, Abraham had to endure great difficulties till he finally reached a barren, uninhabited land. It was again the call of God which later sent Abraham back to Palestine, leaving Hajar and the baby son alone in this unknown valley. And when food supplies ran out, Hajar ran back and forth between two hills, known today as Safa and Marwa, in search of water to feed the young Ismail. After seven unsuccessful trips, Hajar went back to get her son, only to find that something emerged from the desert sand underneath Ismail's heels. Then, a spring slowly appeared, and Hajar knew right away that it was God's miracle to save both of them from the unbearable heat of the scorching land. The miracle water, known today as Zamzam, had never stopped flowing from that same place ever since. Zamzam became the source of life to this otherwise deserted land. Human settlements appeared one by one here, known back then as Baka, meaning narrow valley. When Abraham returned, Allah instructed the Prophet to build a house of worship known today as the Kaaba in Mecca. The face of Mecca has changed tremendously ever since. This is Mecca more than 1000 years ago. The inhabitants who belonged to different tribes were led by the Kuzaha family and much later the Quraysh from which Muhammad, the last messenger, came from. As settlements in Mecca grew, so did the appearance of the houses. Homes had simple designs and were made from clay and stone. The changing face of Mecca became prominent, especially during the times of Muhammad, when the last prophet successfully made Mecca one of the two holiest cities in Islam. This is the Masjid al-Haram, the Grand Mosque of Mecca during the rule of the Umayyad dynasty in the 8th century. The mosque's total area was enlarged significantly during the reign of Al-Walid Abdul Malik, who ruled from the year 705 to 715 AD. After the extensive work, the Masjid al-Haram encompassed an area of 10,270 square meters. Al-Walid was also responsible for the building of minarets around the Grand Mosque. And later, during the rule of Al-Muqtadir of the Abbasid dynasty, the Masjid al-Haram's area had reached more than 30,000 square meters. Once a year, pilgrims from all over the world converge in this holy city to perform the Hajj, or pilgrimage, the fifth pillar in Islam. In the 1950s, the number of pilgrims reached the 200,000 mark, double the number in the 1920s.
Bhaya Mutawi, an experienced guide who would assist the pilgrims to perform the Hajj. It was during the rule of the Umayyad dynasty that the Kaaba began to be adorned with verses from the Holy Quran. Prior to this, only plain cloth was used to cover it. In the year 692 AD, the Kaaba had roof complete with rain gutter. This is part of the gutter which is now on display in the Topkapi Museum in Istanbul, Turkey. It was introduced by al hajjaj Yusuf, the governor of the Umayyad dynasty and continued to be used till the last Ottoman leader. The gutter was later plated with gold in 1853 during the reign of Sultan Abdul Majid I. The Turkish Ottoman dynasty was founded in 1281. In 1517, one of its leaders, Sultan Salim I, was awarded the key to the Kaaba, which symbolized the beginning of the Ottoman sovereignty over the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. The Ottomans also took great efforts in the maintenance of the Kaaba. Part of the work was to replace the aging wooden doors. They are now on display in the Topkapi Museum in Istanbul. The designs of the Kaaba doors were also refined from time to time. The changing facade can be seen on these doors now on display in the Saudi Museum. They were built during the early years of the Saudi government. Later, the appearance and strength of the doors were reinforced by covering them with copper. Back then, the design of the doors did not include verses from the Holy Quran. 